we'll be going to Luke chapter 4 in the amplified version Luke chapter 4 verses 14 to 21 then turn to John 19 verses 28 through 30 in the King James Version does everyone have a Bible does everyone have a phone amen amen if there's someone sitting next to you that does not have the Bible please share it with them because we need to read this together here begins the reading of God's Word Luke chapter 4 verse 14 through 21 then Jesus went back to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and the news about him spread through the entire region and he began teaching in their synagogues and was praised and glorified and honored by all. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, the Messiah, because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to announce, release, pardon, forgiveness to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To set free those who are oppressed, downtrodden, bruised, crushed by tragedy. To proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and the favor of God abound greatly. Then he rolled up the scroll, having stopped in the middle of the verse, gave it back to the attendant and sat down to teach. And the eyes of all those in the synagogue were attentively fixed on him. He began speaking to them. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing and in your presence. John 19, verses 28 through 30 in the King James. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of our God. You may be seated in his presence. I would like to use as a subject on this morning, oil and vinegar don't mix. <laughs> oil and vinegar don't mix. I'm gonna shake this up because it, there may be some doubters in the house. So I'm gonna shake this up and I'm gonna put it here for a moment. If you look at the bottle closely, you will see that the oil and the vinegar are separated. You saw that in the beginning. I just, we'll, we'll watch it again. They are not mixed together because lipids or fats are not dissolvable in water. They are insoluble. Vinegar is an acidic liquid and it's produced through fermentation. Any ingredient containing ethanol may be used to make vinegar, including distilled grain alcohol, wine, champagne, 
beer, cider, and more. So let's go back again. The primary reason they don't mix is because vinegar is mostly water. So it will not be able to form a solution with oil. Their individual molecules are strongly only attracted to others of their own kind. I want to say that again. Their individual molecules are strongly only attracted to others of their own kind. In other words, oil molecules attract other oil molecules. And water molecules attract other water mo molecules only. And they both exclude each other. In other words, oil molecules attract other oil molecules. And water molecules attract other water molecules. And they both exclude each other. Walk with, just walk with me, we're we going somewhere. We have several scriptures for oil in the Bible. If you looked in Exodus 28 and 29, Aaron and his sons had anointed oil poured all over them to become anointed as priests to work the tabernacle. They were set apart as holy so that they could serve as God's priests. If you look in Leviticus chapter 8, Moses took the anointing oil and he anointed the tabernacle and everything that was in it to make it holy. He anointed the wash basin. He went in and touched all of the utensils and he poured oil. He, he sprinkled the altar seven times and everything that was anointed with the oil was separated unto holiness. David was anointed with oil. If you looked in 1 Samuel chapter 16, the Lord told Samuel, you have mourned long enough for Saul. Don't you know that I have rejected him as king? Now, I need you to fill you your horn with olive oil, and I need you to go to Bethlehem. Find a man by the name of Jesse because he's got eight sons. And I need you to go and sit down and, and, and talk to him for a while. So, so, so um, he, was, he was obedient and, and he found Jesse. And initially he found seven sons. And they brought, he, they, Jesse brought his sons out and, and he looked at them. And he said to Jesse, mm -mm, there's, there, there's another one. He said, yes, I do have a, a young son. And, He's out in the field and he's taking care of the sheep. He said, go get him. I need to bring, you need to bring him in because I need to, I need to see him. David arrived. Samuel looked at him. He said, that's the one. God knows who you are. And you can run and hide all you want. But when there is an assignment and an anointing on your life, you can run, but you cannot hide. Samuel took the oil of oil and he poured it on David's head. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily on him from that day on. You're probably trying to figure out why did you bring those two scriptures into play? Well, I needed to get some more clarity on Messiah. And when I looked up the word Messiah, it means the anointed one or the chosen one. And normally in scripture, when you see oil, it symbolizes the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Isaiah 61 and 1 links oil and spirit. So turn to Isaiah 61 and 1 with me. Isaiah 61 and 1. The Bible says, 
The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. I want to read it again because you need to see that oil and spirit are linked in Isaiah 61 and 1. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. We read earlier in Luke chapter 4, the very same scripture. But this time, Jesus himself, the Messiah, the anointed one, went into the synagogue and he stood up to read. He took out the scroll. I love God. He stood up to read. He took out the scroll from the prophet Isaiah. It was handed to him and he read it. After he read it, after he read the scripture, he rolled it back up, sat down, in his seat. And all of them were looking at him like, who are you? He rolled the scroll, sat down, and he said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Y'all ain't get it. I come to tell All of you that think I'm just Mary's son, you know, I'm nobody. I'm the Messiah. I am the anointed one. And today the scripture that you heard before is me. I'm the man. I am the anointed one. It hasn't completely separated But as time goes on, we're going to see that the oil is going to be raised back to the top. I told you oil and vinegar do not mix. Let's look at Jesus being crucified. In Matthew 27 and 34 in the King James Version, the Bible says they gave him vinegar to drink. My God. And it was mingled with gall. And when he tasted it, he would not drink it. The wine was mixed with a narcotic to deaden the pain. So he said no. If you look in John 19, 28 through 30, the scripture read, that it needed to be fulfilled. The Bible says in 6 Psalms 69 and 21, They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. But I told you in the beginning, oil and vinegar don't mix. Jesus, knowing that all was finished, said, I thirst. But when they gave him the vinegar, they were actually making a mockery because it was sour wine. It wasn't, and he wasn't thirsty like we thirst. His thirst was for the souls of men, women, boy, and girls. He said, I thirst. And they sat back there and said, well, you want something to drink? We're going to give you some vinegar. But I'm going to tell you right now, don't mess with the anointed one. The Bible says they got a jar full of vinegar. They took that jar of vinegar and they put a sponge in the jar and they soaked it. When they pulled it out, they put it on a stalk reed. And at the end of it was a hyssop. And they put it to our Savior's mouth. The Bible says when Jesus received the vinegar, he opened up his mouth and said, it is finished. I come to 
tell somebody everything that's coming up against you is because you're anointed. But I want you to know, every time they bring the vinegar, just look up and say, it is finished. Every time the enemy comes with a scheme and with a plan, when you are anointed for real, when the oil of the most high God has been poured from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, I will condemn, saith the Lord. Because oil and vinegar Now it's taking a long time. It's okay. Oil. All of us need the oil. We can't teach without the oil. We can't preach without the oil. We can't even talk to one another without the oil. We can't sing without the oil. There is nothing we can do without the oil but I need you to know stay away from the vinegar it's acidic it's acid it burns if you drink it you gotta be careful with the vinegar you gotta be careful who's close by you cause if they don't have the anointing they'll try to convince you drink the vinegar We need the oil. I watched here <laughs> on Friday night. And I said, God, you're moving very unusual in this place. Then I thought about all of the messages that have been coming forth from our senior pastor. And then I thought about some people don't realize what's happening. God said, don't worry about it. He said, if you stand on my word, you're going to see something that's about to happen. Our senior pastor read to us on last week from Acts chapter 2 and 17. I need you to take it out. Acts 2, 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servant and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. I don't have a long message today. All I need you to know that oil and vinegar don't mix. So I come to tell you, if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, today is your day. The altar is open right now. I don't have a long speech. I don't have a long sermon. I need you to know you got to get the oil. Because without the oil, you're not going to know whether to go left, whether to go right, whether to stand still, whether to go back. The oil gives direction. Hallelujah. I know everybody thinks the oil is a dance. It's not a dance. It's not just open up your mouth. It's more than that because the oil gives you stamina to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We need some oil. Oil. Oil will make you pray for your enemy. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Your oil will make you speak when they don't want to speak. God bless you. Have his smile upon you and keep on walking. Oil. The oil will remind you that's greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. I need you to get the oil. You know what happens when you get the oil? You could be sitting in your house. And all of a sudden you feel his presence. You didn't even hear an organ. You didn't hear a piano play. You ain't hear a drum. But all of a sudden you realize I'm in the presence of a holy God. And the tears begin to flow down your face. And your hands begin to go up. And you begin to say holy, holy, holy. You're holy. You're righteous. You're a deliverer. It's the oil. music to dance I don't need no music that's the oil y'all so-and-so every now and then be and you know we we do our little drink thing you know we get our drink on no it's quiet <laughs> oil and vinegar 
Don't mix. Oh, did you hear so and so and so and so? Y'all know me, right? Don't come to my face with no gossip because I will shut it down. Because oil and vinegar don't mix. What should we do instead? Come on, sister, let us pray. Let's pray about this. Or let's sit down and reason together. We can work this out. That's oil. But when you're doing the hoopty doopty and that messy messy, I'm going to sit down. And we'll talk about this at a later date. After I've prayed and you prayed and we prayed and we got some, some divine wisdom and instructions from God. Oil, write this down, always rises to the top. Our Messiah is the anointed one. And because he got up with all power in his hand, we too shall get up knowing our God reigns. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep this in my office. <laughs> because in about an hour or so, if you want to come down, you'll see the vinegar is at the bottom. The oil is at the top. And no matter how we try to mix this thing together, it's going to separate. There are some, hallelujah, there are some people who feel I can do this by myself. I don't need the oil. The altar is open for you. You want the Holy Ghost? You want him to pour his spirit upon you? You've already said, God, I recognize I can't do this thing without you. The oil is flowing. And it's been flowing for generations and generations and generations. But now we're in the last days. And hell is going to break loose. You think it's breaking loose? Hell is about to break loose. But we don't have to be concerned. He's got us. I'm not talking about church people. I'm not talking, I'm not, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about blood washed. Those of us who've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. We don't have to worry. So put a smile on your face. Lift up your heads, all ye gates. Come on, and let's give God glory if you have the oil. If you have the oil. And you don't want no vinegar no more. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory with the oil, he'll come in. But you gotta release yourself. You've gotta open up yourself and say, God, I need your presence. I need your anointing. I need you to do a new thing in me. It's pouring out. He's pouring it out, but you've gotta receive. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody want the oil? Come on, if you want the oil. The oil is the Holy Ghost. And he's pouring out it in these last days. Hallelujah. But you've got to open up your mouth. You've got to open up your mouth and say, God, I need you. I can't make it without you. I need you to strengthen me on this journey. Hallelujah. I need you to give me direction on this journey. I don't want to do it the way I've done it anymore. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. He's pouring it out. 
He's pouring it out just for you. Oh, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pour out, God. Pour out your oil. Pour out your oil. Your people need your oil. We recognize we need the oil.